Okay. Um, I wanted to make a post. Uh, I made a post earlier on Facebook about... Let me get all comfortable here. Uh, I made a post earlier, and I'm still trying to figure out how to get rid of that glare and stuff on my glasses, but uh, we'll figure it out soon enough. Uh, I, I made a post earlier on Facebook about an incident that occurred in Oklahoma where two white males had uh, uh, held uh, African-American uh, delivery uh, driver for up to an hour because he was in a gated community and they wanted him to tell them where he had gone to drop off goods. Um, <clears throat> somebody came onto my the page and posted that that was just two ignorant people and that that was not racially motivated. Uh, and I can don't agree with that. I think there was a, a big degree of, of racism involved in that. You know, I think that one of the reasons that we have such a problem with racism in the United States is that we have people that continue to make excuses for individuals that are racist, like that, saying they're ignorant. Well, I understand that they're ignorant, but at some point in their life, these were men that, this was the president of the Homeowners Association, at some point somebody told them that certain things were wrong. And if you consider continue to do them, then if they're racially charged, then you're a racist. I mean, come on. It, it is what it is. Any Anytime you use a term like you people or those people, there there's classism and racism embroiled in that, okay? Now, some people sometimes tell me, well, you're a brown person, you know, what the hell do you know about racism? Well, actually, I know a lot about it. And the reason that I know a lot about it is because uh, Mexicans and Mexican-Americans tend to be, uh, well, uh, pretty racist on top of classist. And then, then you add the dynamics of machismo in there. And it, I mean, it's a you know, really good stew there. I mean, I grew up in Laredo, Texas. And I'm very proud to say that I'm from Laredo, Texas. But I grew up in a very isolated uh, world, okay? I got an itch on my neck. Um, where everything was the ito, you know, the ITO, you know, mandito. Everything's diminutized. So when we would see an Asian person, you would say, un chinito. I mean, it didn't matter if the guy was Vietnamese or or Japanese or Korean. I mean, it's ah, un chino, you know. Uh, the other thing that we have is that in Laredo and in most Mexican culture, the lighter you are, the better off you're going to be. You know what I mean? My brother, who is darker skin, uh, there would be some tongue-in-cheek remarks that my dad would make on the basis of the color of his skin. And my grandmother, Gloria, always had uh, an affinity to him because she felt that he was somewhat marginalized because of the color of his skin. I was more white complected, right? You see, my daughter saw me without my shorts, without my my socks the other day, and she said, "Oh my God, you're so white!" And I have somewhat colored eyes, you know, I'm lighter complected. So I always seem to get treated better. Now I am still Mexican. I look like a Mexican. I mean, look at my profile, you know, other than being fat, you know, I got a Mexican nose. Como dicen, traigo lo para la frente. But I I think. The, the, the issue with Laredo was truly ignorance. You know, very isolated place next to the border. I mean, in Laredo, you're screwed either way because you weren't American enough to be American and you weren't Mexican enough to be Mexican. And that's usually the case for people along the border. You don't speak Spanish good enough. You don't speak English good enough. You, know, you get caught in this doldrum, okay? The other thing that was is that whenever we would you know, hurl a racial epithet or call somebody from Mexico a mojado, you know, that was just what people would say there, you know, I mean, come on, I mean, when you play Loteria, you have the Loteria card of, you know, El Negrito, you know, that that's not right, you know, that's a, 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 a picket, what they call picking and you need to be, and some Loterias don't have it anymore, and I believe that they shouldn't, they also don't have El Borracho, because I guess it promotes, you know, that. And uh, uh, there's another one. I don't remember what it was. Uh, I think it's El Valiente because it promotes uh, violence. But getting back to what I was talking about is that it's easy for me to understand racism up here in Fort Worth because uh, I'm not the, well, 
we're almost a majority, but there are actually more Mexicans living in DFW than in all of South Texas put together. And and the issue up here is that it is just it's just not people from northern Mexico, you know, Saltillo, Monterrey, those places, uh, and and Nuevo Laredo, Matamoros, you know, Piedras Negras. I mean, these are people from Zacatecas, Sinaloa, you know, uh, Oaxaca, Hidalgo, El Distrito Federal, and, and they don't have time to play those racist games that they would otherwise play in in Mexico. You know, I've never heard up here a Mexican being classist or being racist towards another Mexican because he's darker or he's lighter or whatever it may be. I also haven't seen the classism, you know, uh, which is a problem that we have. You know, I dated two girls uh, when I was young and her parents said, He's not like you. You can't go out with him. He's not from your socioeconomic status, you know. Uh, and I had never really, didn't really know what that meant. Uh, but, you know, the irony of it is that um, I did pretty good. And from what I understand, uh, they didn't do as good as they thought they were going to do. But that that's a story for another day. Uh, I believe that, you know, the racism that I was around was just something that they did and, and, and it was horrible once I came up here I realized that you you know you can't say those things and and let's get away from the notion of political correctness because it's not about being political correct to say well now we have to watch what we say all the time well you know what it wasn't okay for us to say it back then but uh, people just didn't know how to respond I mean I guarantee you some I've, I've told people you know I had a guy I actually have somebody I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say who, but tell me. Well, I don't see any any wrong with calling a, a brown person a beaner. And I said, well, if you call me a beaner, I guess I'm gonna go to jail because I'm gonna beat your ass, you know. And that's the kind of attitude that we shouldn't tolerate anymore. And we shouldn't call ourselves those names. I've seen some videos uh, that were recorded in South Texas, uh, where you know uh, Hispanic kids are using the N word freely, and they think it sounds so cool. Uh, so that is not right. I, you know, I have a, a, a son of mine who I does not speak to me because he says I'm too liberal. Who uses that kind of language, you know? But he did not learn it in my household. He did not grow up with me. So yes, I am going to blame it on the other household because they didn't put an end to it. They didn't put a stop to it. Um, talking a little bit more about the classism. I mean, it's 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 not a it's a horrible thing, you know, along with machismo. And the way that we see the other, the people from across the border, you know, I, sometimes I hear people from Laredo, and even myself at one time, would make fun of people from Nuevo Laredo, and lo and behold, I know that Laredo probably wouldn't exist without, you know, Mexico. Uh, Nuevo Laredo has always been, you know, a, a bigger, and it's an economic powerhouse because of the labor. But, you know, we still think seem to think that people from Nuevo Laredo are, are beneath us, you know what I mean? Because we are, live in Laredo or we live in Zapata or, you know, uh, Rio Grande or McAllen. And, you know, we occupy them. Tenemos maids. I think now the, the N-word is, the N-word to call them is uh, nannies, okay? Uh, like, well, they're, they're beneath us, but we'll still use their labor. Uh, now, where am I going with this? What was the whole point of this? Well, the point I'm trying to make is that look, Anglo Americans do not have an op do not have a monopoly on racism. They they don't. Okay. And when I teach my classes, I always tell my my students that you know Mexicans are very racist, and then ask me, well, how do you know? And they say, well, then I tell them some of the things that went on in my life and with my family, and they say, oh my God, my parents are the same way. You know, I had a student in one of my in one of my classes just recently, whose parents threw her out because she was dating a African American uh, Muslim, and they said, "You know, how dare you go out with, you know, that kind of person? If you want to continue to go out with him, you, you better leave the house." The way that I found out about it is that you know, she came and reported to me that some things had happened, and I directed her to counseling and stuff like that. But but with that said. You know, I don't ever want to 
seem like we're ganging up on on white people because we're not. You know, just historically, they have a record uh, for for being racist. You know, towards blacks and um, towards Mexicans. Now, I will say one thing. You know, we do know that the, a lot of Mexicans in South Texas fought for the Confederacy. A lot of Mexicans in South Texas had slaves. Um, uh, and that's another, you know, that's another issue that we have to deal with. But, you know, I just wanted to give you that for food for thought. You know, just just look at the little things that we do to to try and un-Mexicanize us, to make ourselves more American. You know, when somebody says, well, you're an American now, you need to speak English. You know, you know, when, when you know, the, the, mo <laughs> the, the most common name, the most popular baby name in Mexico last year was Brian. And the most popular uh, female name in Mexico was Kaylee. So you can see how that is is push, pulling to that, and they feel well. If I whiten myself, maybe they won't they won't be so racist. Well, no, there's there's no way to whiten ourselves. We we need to be comfortable with who we are. Brown people, you know. I always tell people, you know, I'm when I'm joking, I'll say, well, you know, I'm really I really feel bad for you because you're not a brown person and. And I and look, I'm the best looking brown person in the world. And and it's it's I'm not saying that with any indignation of hate or racism. I'm just very proud of who I am, you know, and I embrace my ethnicity. And I also believe that race is not a biological trait, it's an ethnic trait, it's a trait that is connected through with language, okay? And a lot of people don't realize that over two hundred languages are spoken in Mexico. They think, what does a Mexican look like? Well, you know, my sister, uh, Veronica, has red hair, so, you know, she probably has some Irish blood in her from her ancestors in Mexico, from the Cavazos family. My sister, Jessica, is always being told that she's not a Mexican because she's so pale. Um, my uncle, Rodolfo Mendez, Popo, who is no longer with us, he was very dark, you know. Uh, remember that there is a lot. In Mexico, Mexico just acknowledged Afro-Caribbean or Afro-Mexicanos, you know, they were saying, yeah, you are an ethnicity that lives within Mexico. Uh, thir a third of Laredo, Texas uh, in 1790 was mulatto. Uh, by the time you get to the 1820s, they're gone. Like, what happened to them? Did they just fly away or what? No, they whitened themselves and eventually got away from that. Remember, in 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 Mexican culture, you got peninsulares, criollos, mestizos, which is me. I'm a mestizo, mixed blood, and then of course you have mulatos and then indios, right? Peninsulares are the people that come from Spain. The people say, "Well, I have more blood, more." No, you don't. You don't have more Spanish blood. Um, the criollo is whose parents are born in Spain, but they were born in Mexico. And then you have the mestizo, which is the largest population of Mexicans in Mexico, which is mixed blood people. Now, a lot of these people that are doing these 23andMe things, they're realizing that they have more European blood than they do indigenous blood. But the blood quantum to be considered indigenous is one eighth. Most Mexicanos, such as myself, have anywhere between a quarter and a half. Why don't they give us a Native American indigenous card? Well, because if they do that, then then we will have a greater minority status, you know. So we have to be classified as white in the United States. Otherwise, other minorities would outnumber whites. We're like the other white meat, like pork maybe or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, uh, like I said, I just wanted to put this out there to say that, you know, white people don't have a monopoly on racism. I'll make another uh, video later on talking about machismo or talking about classism. A perfect example of classism in Laredo, believe it or not, is a Pocahontas celebration and the Washington birthday celebration. That is, I mean, as beautiful and as grand as it may be, that is where the poor people come out and, you know, look at these rich people whose dresses cost more than what some of these people earn in a year. I, I, I don't agree with that because it creates a feeling of, you know, the, the, the Pocahontas is a little different. Because the way that they elect them is, is is a little different. But again, you end up spending thousands of dollars on a dress and they, they don't resemble Native Americans. I mean, so um, there are others like the black and white ball or the Elysian or whatever it may be. But, you know, uh, I I do hope that one day I, I do go back to Laredo and, you know, spend the twilight of my life teaching there. 
Uh, I've always wanted to move back because I'm only two hours from the coast. Uh, and that's where my roots are. And that's where a lot of my family members are. But remember, once they tell you that it's wrong and you elect to continue to say those things and act that way, then you're no longer ignorant. You're just being a racist and a bigot or a machista or a sexist or a misogynist or whatever you may want to call it. You know, once somebody points it out to you, ya te chingaste. Ya, ya te dijeron. You know, and, and, and then you have to reconcile with yourself. You know, I'm not asking everybody to go and embrace all the ethnicities, but don't, don't make yourself feel better, you know, at their cost. Okay, you all have a great day, evening, morning, whatever it may be, and be kind to each other.